Story time about how my best friend was a snake. So a little background information, I was 15 and in ninth grade, and I've been best friends with this girl who we're going to call Callie since 5th grade. Well, fast forward to 8th grade, there was this guy in my class that I really liked, and obviously I told Callie about it because, like, duh, she is my best friend. And she has never talked to this boy. She never even knew who he was before I had told her about him. And by the way, we're going to call him Jake. Well, eventually him and I start talking, and she was hyping us up, like she really wanted us to be together so bad. And I was really feeling the love and support. Well, not long after that, I had to move to another town for like three months because of my dad. So Jake and I, we stopped talking after me being gone for like two weeks. And of course, not long after that, one of my friends from home texted me. And she's like, hey, you know Callie and that guy that you were talking to, right? AKA Jake. Obviously, I say yes. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend was a snake. So like I said, I had to move away for three months because of my dad and Jake and I, we stopped talking about two weeks after I had left. And then I get a text from my friend saying, hey, you know, Callie and that guy that you were talking to, Jake, obviously I say yes. And then she goes, oh, well, they're talking about getting together. And I was livid. I'm like, dude, I've literally been gone for like less than a month and you're already trying to get with the guy that I liked. What the actual, you know what? So I bawl my eyes out for like two hours straight. And then I decide that I'm going to confront her. And she literally says to me, like she has the audacity to say that she's been in love with him for so long, even before I had told her about him. Which is a lie, because as I told you guys earlier, she didn't know this man. Well, anyways, Jake ended up friend zoning her and she didn't even really apologize to me. She said sorry, but like she didn't acknowledge the importance of the situation and how it made me feel. She just thought that saying sorry would make it all better. Story time about my weird cellmate. So a little background information, I was 17 years old and a junior in high school. Yes, I was 17 and I was being charged as an adult. So I was in with a bunch of women. Well, one night after dinner, my cellmates and I are watching true crime shows because that's what you do when you're in jail. Watch true crime and CSI and all that shit. Anyway, so we're watching our shows and we see a new girl come in. She's got her blanket packed and we're all being warm and welcoming. And immediately all of us could sense that something was off with this chick. Immediately, she starts going off about how she has a problem with the TV show we're watching. She did not like the fact that we were watching crime shows. She was like, oh my gosh, you guys really need to turn this off like right now. Loki thought I was going to see her on there or some shit. But yeah, she was just being super paranoid and we're sitting there like, girl, we have 10 channels. Seven of them are going to be true crime and two of them are the news. Oh, and the other channel was black and white movies and nobody wanted to watch that shit. So then I asked her if she unalived someone, life report. Part three about my weird cellmate. So like I said, we asked her what she was in for and she didn't answer, so we found that weird as heck. So then she went for a visit and we searched through her stuff and found her paperwork. We found out that she was in because she attempted to unalive her husband, in which he got a restraining order. So at this point, um, we're like, this is weird as hell and she needs to go. Like, she gotta go. So now the entire pod comes together and every single one of us wrote a letter pleading the staff to get this crazy you-know-what out of our pod. We all folded them up into little paper kites and we sent them to the guards. We were ringing the doorbell like crazy and we told them what happened and no questions asked, she was gone. Part two about my weird cellmate. So like I said, I asked her if she unalived someone before because only somebody who unalived somebody would be triggered over us watching true crime, but she completely ignores me. So the first night, something happened with this girl. It was low-key, um, very, very weird. Me and my other cellmates were like, this girl's weird as hell. Why is she here? And then the next day was the icing on the cake. So it was cleaning day, and we're all cleaning our stuff. And this girl just starts cleaning the weirdest things, like the inside of trash cans and shit that didn't need to be cleaned. And then it started getting creepy. Not weird, creepy. She put a paper towel over the drains because the voices were too loud. And then she would walk around the pod talking about death and carnage. And if you don't know what carnage means, it pretty much just means unaliving a lot of people. So this was super bad vibes, obviously. Now when you're in jail, of course people are going to ask what you're doing time for. And if you don't say, you're going to come off as sketchy. So we're asking this girl, hey, what are you in for? And she would not give us a straight answer. Well, while she was at a visit, we went through her things, like for part Story time, I was the toxic best friend. So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And at the beginning of the year, I met this girl who we're going to call Riley. Riley and I hit it off straight away. Like a week after knowing each other, she knew everything about me and I knew everything about her. Well, then she tells me about this guy that she's talking to, who we're going to call Jay. 
She said that they would hook up sometimes and he would text her sometimes. But she said that I couldn't tell anybody because he said that it had to be a secret. So I tried telling her that he sounded like a fuck boy, but she decided she was going to do whatever she wanted. And I was like, okay. So fast forward to the end of the year, he adds me on Snapchat. Okay, don't get me wrong. He was really hot, but I had my own thing going on. So I really didn't pay that much attention to him. And I thought he maybe added me on Snapchat to be like, oh my God, I really like your best friend. And then I also was caught between a rock and a hard place. Do I tell my best friend that the guy that she likes just added me on Snapchat? Or do I lie to her? Well, I was going to tell her until I got a Snapchat from him, like for part two. Part two about how I was the toxic best friend. So like I said, I didn't know whether I should tell her that he added me on Snapchat or if I should. And I was going to until I got a Snapchat from him. Saying, hey, you're really pretty. Um, I think we should talk sometime. So I ended up telling her about it because I felt really bad. And she was like, this is why I can't trust girls. Like, you need to unadd him right now. Like, fucking block him. And I'm like, I didn't even do anything. Like, what the fuck? So whatever. I end up blocking him. It's fine. Until he texts me one day. And he's like, hey, it's Jay. Um, I think you blocked me on Snapchat, lol. And him and I had talked a little bit in school and I kind of started to like him. Well, fast forward, him and I ended up hooking up a few times. We were talking a lot and he hadn't been texting Riley as much. Well, the one night while I was sleeping over her house, my phone was going off a lot and I didn't think to delete any of the messages, like for part three. Part three about how I was the toxic best friend. So like I said, I was sleeping over her house the one night, my phone was blowing up, and she knows my password and everything, and I stupidly did not delete the text messages between Jay and I. And I kid you not, I wake up to a slap across the face. It felt like she slapped me with her fist, and it looked like it too because I had a black eye. So I woke up and she's like, what the fuck? Like, I hate you so much. Like, why would you do this? And I look down and she has my phone right in her hand on the text messages with Jay. And I ended up feeling really bad because she started crying saying that like, I knew that she liked him a lot. And I also knew the reason why he wasn't texting her as much. Well, then she ran downstairs and she told her mom. And the next thing I know, I had her, her mom, and her three other sisters screaming at me. And then I got blocked by Jay because she wasn't supposed to know and she leaked his nudes. Get ready with me while I tell y'all about how me telling my crush that I had feelings for him completely backfired. So I've been stuck in a situation ship for the past six months. We would go on dates like three or four times a week. But I'm not gonna lie, after five months, I'm like, um, come on, like, let's make things official. Fast forward, my New Year's resolution for 2024 was to stop being a chicken shit and be more outgoing. I saw everybody doing the 100 bucket list challenge on Lemonade. And I figured if anything got me out of my shell, it would be this. And up until like three days ago, things were going great. Like I had already gotten 13 of the things done. Well then, I asked Siri to pick a number 1 through 100 and she decides to choose number 28. Which just so happened to be, confess to your crush. But then I thought to myself, you know what, this could actually be a good thing. Because I'm not built for the situationship life. So that was the night that I decided I was going to tell my man who isn't actually my man that it's time to make things official or kick rocks. As we're driving back to my place so he can drop me off, I just decided to rip off the band-aid. I was like, listen, either we need to make things official or we're never seeing each other again. So then he goes, okay, just give me time to take care of a few things first. And I told him no. So then he goes, okay, fine. Will you be my girlfriend? And I'm like, yeah, duh. So around 2 a.m. that night, I get woken up to my phone being blown up from an unknown number telling me that I'm a horrible person and that I ruined their family. I had no idea this man had a wife and kids. Anyways, after that, I cut him off, but I'm still getting phone calls from random numbers which i thought it was him but it's not it's actually his wife thankfully i dodged a bullet if you want to see me complete the rest of this list definitely join me on lemonade's 100 bucket list challenge don't forget to follow me at kaylee lees and hopefully the next challenge is not a fail story time about how my fiance cheated on me with 10 other girls so a little background information i met this guy on instagram and we're gonna call him bryce now when him and i met he was stationed in korea and he refused to ask me to be his girlfriend until he came home. So I waited an entire year for him to ask me to be his girlfriend. Which low-key should have been a red flag, but he made it seem romantic in some twisted weird way. So fast forward, he comes home in February. And he kept to his promise. The first day that we met, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I say yes, fast forward. Him and I start having a ton of arguments because of things that he was doing while he was in Korea. Fast forward, we're officially together for nine months. So fast forward, of course, he gets deployed to Europe in like September of 2022. 
So this man decides that he's going to propose to me in July and then beg me to get married to him before he leaves. Now, I may have ignored the first red flags, but I'm not dumb, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with 10 other girls. So like I said, this man begs me to get married to him before he leaves, and thank goodness I didn't because divorce papers would have been served the same day. So fast forward, he starts acting super weird, he's going out 24-7, he's getting drunk, he's not wearing the ring that he begged me to get him. Yes, he literally begged me for a ring so that way women would know that he had a girlfriend. Well, then of course I get a DM from a girl on Instagram asking if him and I were still together. And then after talking to her, I realized he literally made a Tinder two days after he got deployed. And what was his excuse? Oh, I wanted to meet friends to teach me German. And listen, I was not born last night, so I kept that conversation going because I wanted to get to the bottom of what the fuck was actually going on. And then, of course, he finally comes clean that he cheated on me with a bunch of girls. Oh, and you want to know the icing on the cake? One of them was a minor. Yup. After I leave him, he has the audacity to ask for my ring back, but I threatened to tell Story time about how I got pregnant by my boyfriend's younger brother, and he still doesn't know. So a little background information, I am 19 years old, and I am in college. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for about two years, and we're gonna call him Josh. The two years that we've been dating have been super rocky, because he would try to hook up with other girls. Well, no, actually, he wouldn't try. He would hook up with other girls. And then, you know, him and I would break up, and then we would get back together. You know, just your usual toxic relationship. The main reason why I kept going back to him was because he was super popular, and this made me feel like I was never going to find anybody better than him, so on and so forth. Now, Josh's brother is 21 years old, and somehow, some way, him and I started hooking up. Right around after the time I found out that my boyfriend was cheating on me with my cousin. Yes, my cousin. I'm saying that like I'm not hooking up with his brother. Um, anyways. Well, one day I realized that I haven't gotten my period in two months, so I took a pregnancy test, and it came back positive. Like for part two. Part two about how I got pregnant by my boyfriend's younger brother and he still doesn't know. So like I said, my boyfriend cheated on me with my cousin and somehow that led to me hooking up with his younger brother. Well, fast forward one day, I realized that I haven't gotten my period in two months. So I took a pregnancy test and it came back positive, of course. And the first thing that I did was go to Josh's brother because him and I were hooking up way more than my boyfriend and I were within the past few months. Well, we both came to the conclusion that I should just tell my boyfriend that it's his and see what happens from there. So I told my boyfriend I'm pregnant and he was super happy, he gave me this whole speech about how he's going to be a better boyfriend for me and the baby, which in simpler terms pretty much means, yay babe, I'm going to stop cheating on you since you're pregnant, but only because you're pregnant. So now my boyfriend is raising my one-year-old daughter who he thinks is his and I'm still hooking up with his brother. Story time about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend. So a little background information. So his ex-girlfriend's parents, they owned a security company, which sold cameras, alarms, and a few other things. So at the end of 2019, my boyfriend broke up with his ex-girlfriend. And by March of 2020, he started seeing me. And at first, we were just keeping things on the down low. Anyways, so after maybe three weeks of seeing my boyfriend, his ex sent me an Instagram message calling me a slut. It's the obsession for me. Anyways, what's even weirder is that she knew everything about my boyfriend and I. Even the sexual things. Anyways, like I said, I thought that was really weird, so everything that she had sent me, I sent straight to him. Because I thought, obviously, that he had still been talking to her and had told her everything about us. But instantly, he gave me his phone and said go through it, and he had her blocked on everything. So even though it was weird, we moved on from that situation. Well, fast forward another two weeks, and his ex calls him while I'm at his house. Like for part two. Story time about why you just can't bring some friends around your boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school. And I have been best friends with this one girl who we're going to call Lily for about two years. Now, Lily and I weren't your ordinary best friends. We were the ones that would party together, but we would never talk about anything serious. And when I mean serious things, I mean like a secret that you don't want anybody to know. Just for a little example, the one time I told her that I thought I was pregnant. And clearly she knew that I was super scared and I told her I don't want anybody to know. Please don't say anything. Um, yeah, in about 30 minutes, I had like 20 people asking me if I was pregnant. And then somehow my parents found out. She's also the best friend that you keep away from any guy that you like. Well, I have been dating this guy who we're going to call Jared for six months. And obviously, now that I have a boyfriend, I've stopped hanging out with her as much. But my whole thing is she would never give me a heads up on plans. She would literally just text me and be like, hey, we're going out tonight. And I would text her back and I would be like, sorry, I can't. I already have plans with Jared. So this made her really upset, like for part two. 
part two about why you just can't bring some of your friends around your boyfriend. So like I said, she was getting very upset with the fact that she would ask me to make plans last minute and I would tell her that I'm busy with my boyfriend. And this went on throughout Jared and I's whole relationship. And it wasn't like I would ignore her. I would still hang out with her. I just wouldn't go and party and stuff like that because I respected my relationship. She would also always ask me to not bring my boyfriend to these parties. And that's another reason why I wouldn't go. So the one night she's like, listen, you know, come out with me. You can bring your boyfriend. It won't be a problem, which was a shocker. So I was a little bit skeptical, but I said, okay. So we go to this party and usually whenever I'm with Lily, I get really messed up, but I was trying to pace myself this night. And then she's like, come on, you don't mind if she gets drunk, right, Jared? Of course, him wanting me to have fun. He said, no, he doesn't mind. She calls us an Uber and then she asked for my boyfriend's Snapchat just so that way she could check up on us because I was too drunk. The entire ride home, Lily is blowing up Jared's phone and we just think that she's trying to check on us. Um, no. Instead, when we got home, he opened his phone and it was actually Lily sending him a bunch of naked pictures. Story time about how my ex-boyfriend stole all my shit and then gave it to his new girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 23 and I had been dating this guy who we're gonna call Derek for two years. Now, at first I thought that our relationship was perfect. Of course, you guys know how it goes. But then the one day he came home from work and he told me that he had been cheating on me throughout our whole relationship. He literally had a full on relationship the past two years that him and I were supposed to be together with another girl. But yeah, he came home from work and he told me, listen, I don't wanna be with you. I really love her. You know, it's just not working out. So obviously I go and I find her social media and I tell her and she just blocks me. She literally just blocks me. And then he told me that she knew that he was also dating me at the same time. So whatever, fast forward, you know, he moves out, he moves in with her, and he is slowly moving his stuff out of my apartment. Like, it literally took him four months to get all of his stuff out of my apartment. Anyway, so the one day he calls me while I'm at work, and he's like, hey, can I come get the keys? I need to get some of my stuff. So obviously, this had been going on the past four months, so I was like, yeah, just come pick the keys up. So he does. Like for part two. Part two about how my ex stole all of my stuff and gave it to his new girlfriend. So like I said, he comes, he grabs the keys, and he goes to my house. He's getting all of his stuff. When my neighbor, who is one of my friends, she's like freaking out, calling me over 10 times. Obviously, I'm at work, so I can't answer the phone. And then I get a text from her saying that he's there with his new girlfriend. Well, I guess she isn't really a new girlfriend if he's been dating her the whole relationship that we had. But you guys know what I mean. So I'm freaking out and I call him and then I hear her in the background talking to my dog. Now, obviously, I don't even want this girl in my apartment in general. So I'm like freaking out that she's trying to talk to my dog. So I'm yelling at him. I'm like, I want her out of the apartment. I'll call the police if you guys don't leave. Also, tell her to get the away from my dog. So, you know, he says, okay, hangs up the phone. And I call my neighbor and I tell her, call the police if she goes in my apartment again. And less than two minutes later, my friend calls the police because his girlfriend started breaking stuff in my apartment and she took my dog. Literally, like they drove away with my dog and then let it go in the middle of the woods. But I guess it's okay because I got my dog back. Story time about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 14 years old and had just started my freshman year of high school and my brother and his girlfriend were both seniors. And we're gonna call his girlfriend Riley. Now Riley and my brother started dating in the middle of the summer. And you would think since they just started dating and basically just met each other that I wouldn't know her that well. But literally two days after they started dating, she started spending every single day at my house. I'm being serious. Like she had a whole duffel bag that had basically her closet in it. But that wasn't the problem. So in the summertime, my parents would plan a lot of family activities. And since they were called family activities, his girlfriend wasn't allowed to go. I mean, I think she would have been allowed to go, but she was also really disrespectful to my mom. So after one of our family days, my parents asked my brother if Riley would be joining us for dinner. And he just ignored them and went up to his room. And my room's right next to his so I could hear everything. And Riley called him like for part two. Part two about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, my room was right next to my brother so I could literally hear everything. And I guess Riley called him and she was complaining about me. She was like, she's the reason why your mom doesn't like me. I feel like she's jealous of me. She doesn't want us to be together. Which was really weird because I didn't give a fuck about what my brother did. So fast forward, school finally starts and Riley lived about 20 minutes away from us. So my brother told her that he couldn't go and pick her up for school every day. But obviously I would ride to school with him because we lived together. Anyways, eventually she had a problem with that too. So my brother and I had to start leaving 30 minutes early to get to school so we could pick her up. So the first time that we pick her up, we pull up to her house and obviously I'm in the front seat and she's just standing there. So my brother rolls down the window and he's like, get in the fucking car, we're gonna be late. And then she literally has the audacity to start arguing with my brother in front of me about why she should get the front seat instead of me. Like for part three. Part three about why I hated my brother's girlfriend. 
So like I said, once she got in, she started screaming about how she should get the front seat instead of me. So I turn around and I'm like, last time I checked, you've only been here for two months. Stay in your fucking lane. And then she starts crying because she's like, oh my god, your sister's so mean to me. Like, I just feel like I should have more respect as his girlfriend. So fast forward to the weekend, my mom said that she needs to have a talk with me. And she's like, honey, I know you may not like your brother's girlfriend, but you have to stop being mean to her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've only had one conversation with her in the last week. And that was to tell her to stay in her fucking lane. And then I told her about everything going on. So she calls my brother down to ask him if it's true. And my brother was pretty pissed off at me, but he wouldn't lie. So my mom said that she was not allowed over the house anymore. And that he wasn't allowed to go pick her up from school until I got my license. So that just caused more problems between her and my brother. So he broke up with her. And then she started spreading rumors that she broke up with him because there was something weird going on between him and I. Story time about how my ex-boyfriend stole all my shit and then gave it to his new girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 23 and I had been dating this guy who we're gonna call Derek for two years. Now at first I thought that our relationship was perfect, of course you guys know how it goes. But then the one day he came home from work and he told me that he had been cheating on me throughout our whole relationship. He literally had a full on relationship the past two years that him and I were supposed to be together with another girl. But yeah, he came home from work and he told me, listen, I don't wanna be with you, I really love her, you know, it's just not working out. So obviously I go and I find her social media and I tell her, and she just blocks me. She literally just blocks me. And then he told me that she knew that he was also dating me at the same time. So whatever, fast forward, you know, he moves out, he moves in with her, and he is slowly moving his stuff out of my apartment. Like, it literally took him four months to get all of his stuff out of my apartment. Anyway, so the one day he calls me while I'm at work, and he's like, hey, can I come get the keys? I need to get some of my stuff. So obviously, this had been going on the past four months, so I was like, yeah, just come pick the keys up. So he does. Like for part two. Part two about how my ex stole all of my stuff and gave it to his new girlfriend. So like I said, he comes, he grabs the keys, and he goes to my house. He's getting all of his stuff. When my neighbor, who is one of my friends, she's like freaking out, calling me over 10 times. Obviously, I'm at work, so I can't answer the phone. And then I get a text from her saying that he's there with his new girlfriend. Well, I guess she isn't really a new girlfriend if he's been dating her the whole relationship that we had. But you guys know what I mean. So I'm freaking out and I call him and then I hear her in the background talking to my dog. Now, obviously, I don't even want this girl in my apartment in general. So I'm like freaking out that she's trying to talk to my dog. So I'm yelling at him. I'm like, I want her out of the apartment. I'll call the police if you guys don't leave. Also, tell her to get the away from my dog. So, you know, he says, okay, hangs up the phone. And I call my neighbor and I tell her, call the police if she goes in my apartment again. And less than two minutes later, my friend calls the police because his girlfriend started breaking stuff in my apartment and she took my dog. Literally, like they drove away with my dog and then let it go in the middle of the woods. But I guess it's okay because I got my dog back. Story time about how one of my best friends started blackmailing me. So a little background information, I was 16 years old and a junior in high school. And my parents are friends with this other married couple who has a son that is around my age. He's 17, about to be 18, and we're going to call him Derek. Well, him and I somehow ended up getting into the same friend group. And he got my number and him and I started texting a lot. So fast forward, my birthday comes around and I end up having a party. And some of my cousins were around my age as well. So they were there and my whole friend group was there including Derek, of course. Well, surprise, surprise, there were booze and marijuana there, so I ended up getting kind of messed up. And then, as you can guess, Derek and I did the nasty. And surprise again, he had took some pictures and videos of me drinking and stuff. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he sent me a message that literally said for me to send him nude pictures and do stuff for him physically, or else he was going to send these pictures to my parents. Like for part two. Part two about how one of my best friends was blackmailing me. So like I said, he took some pictures and videos of me doing some stuff at my party. And then all of a sudden, I get a message out of nowhere saying that I need to send him nude photos and do stuff for him physically or else he was going to send these pictures to my parents and the whole school literally blackmailed me. Now, of course, I didn't want my parents to find any of this crap out. So it became a regular thing between him and I where I would send him pictures and then do stuff for him. And this went on for a while. Fast forward, thankfully, I'm about to graduate and he doesn't blackmail me anymore since both of us don't want a serious relationship. I don't really know how that makes sense, but yeah. Story time about how my best friend got my house raided. So a little background information, I was 16 and in 11th grade and we're going to call my best friend Jenna. Jenna and I have been on and off friends since elementary school. Now, the reason why we were on and off friends was because Jenna was the type of person who ended up in drama all the time. 
And coincidentally, anytime that I would stop being her friend, I would be in no drama. Now, there have been multiple times where I've tried to break off our friendship for good, but Jenna, of course, was the type of girl who would threaten to unalive herself whenever things didn't go her way. And I low-key have a savior complex. Also, I literally lived right across the street from her. So it was very hard to cut this friendship off. Well, anyways, fast forward. So her and I are friends, which also wasn't good because she was a very bad influence on me. For example, I didn't have a driver's license, but I had a car. So of course I would go pick her up and her and I would fuck shit up together, AKA do bad things. Well, the one night I let her drive and she ended up going to my ex-boyfriend's house like for part, part two about how my best friend got my house raided. So like I said, no license, but I had a car and I let her drive that night. And she went to my ex-boyfriend's house. Now, her and him used to be close whenever him and I were dating. And I didn't think anything of it until she called him and she kept telling him to come outside of his house so we could fight him. And I'm telling her to stop, but she just keeps laughing the whole time and she always does shit like this. And I was tired of being pulled into shit like this because then I got named the psycho stalker girl. So then I find out that after she went home that night, she texted my ex with this whole elaborate story about how I was the one who made her drive to his house and say all that shit. So fast forward, her and I got into it at school because I told a counselor that she was threatening to unalive herself because I was really worried for her. But then she starts posting stuff about my mental health on social media, saying things like, oh, she has zebra stripe arms. And I fought her after that because the only reason why I told our counselor is because I gave a shit about her mental health, like for part three. Story time about why I will never go Black Friday shopping ever again. So a little background information, I was 13 and in eighth grade. And my best friends and I were super excited because we'd never been back Friday shopping before. So we had a plan that all of us would spend the night at my house and my mom would drive us to the mall at four in the morning. So fast forward, it's four in the morning and my friends and I are ready to go to the mall and my mom came with us, but we didn't stay with her the whole time. So as we were walking to the first store, we realized that there were these three guys behind us that have kind of been following us around since we got into the mall. But we just think it's a coincidence because you know, it's Black Friday, the mall is packed. There are obviously going to be people going the same exact way as us. So we go into the first store, we get what we want to get, and the men didn't follow us in there. But as we're making our way to the next store, we realize that they're following us again. It was like they waited outside the first store for us to come out. So then we decided that we were going to walk around one of the kiosks a few times to see if they were really following us. And of course they were, so we went into another store and they didn't follow us in that one either. So I go up to one of the workers and I ask if they could possibly like call security or something. Because there are these guys following us and she said yeah, like for part two. Part two about why I will never go Black Friday shopping ever again. So like I said, my friends and I go into the one store and of course they don't follow us in there. So we ask an employee if they can call security. So whenever security got there, I told them that these guys have been following us around since we got into the mall. And then security's like, well, where's your mother? Acting like it was our fault that we could be kidnapped for not being with my mom. So after that, he's like, all right, just go find your mom, you know, I'll talk to them. So I call my mom and I'm like, hey, where are you? Of course, she's on the whole other side of the mall. So my friends and I are going to meet her on the other side of the mall. And we look back to see if the security guard was talking to them. And literally, the security guard just walked out of the store and went the complete opposite way. So then we walk up to the security guard and we're like, you didn't even talk to him. And then he turns around, rolls his eyes, goes over and starts talking to these guys. And then we continue to the store that my mom was at whenever we decide to stop at Starbucks to get something to drink. So after 10 minutes of waiting in line, you know, we turn around and we see these guys standing at the end of the line just staring at us. So we get out of line and we decide to just go straight to the store that my mom was at. And when we got there, we told her what was going on. So she was like, okay, let me get these few things and then we can leave. Like for part three. Part three about why I will never ever go Black Friday shopping ever again. So like I said, we got out of line and we went straight to the store that my mom was at. And she was like, okay, just let me get these few things and then we can leave. So we start walking towards the exit and then I'm like, mom, they're still following us. So she turns around and she realizes they're literally standing two feet behind us. So we decide to go into one of the stores and we asked one of the employees if they could also call the head of security. And whenever head of security got there, she literally tore them a new you know what. After that, my mom tries to go and point out the guys and they're not standing there anymore. So they're like, well, what do you want us to do? And then my mom's like, well, you can walk us out to our car. So they walk us out to our car and then they stand there while we're getting in. My mom starts the car and she starts backing up and we literally run over something. And all of a sudden we hear like screaming and moaning and the security guards look under the car and literally one of the guys who was following us is literally laying under our cars with a knife. And as soon as that happened, there was literally a van parked right across from our car. The van drove away really fast, but the police ended up catching up to it and they found like eight girls in that van. Story time about how my baby daddy ruined my pregnancy. So a little background information, I was 18 years old and I had just graduated high school. After my ex and I broke up, that's when I met my baby daddy who we are going to call Mark. He had graduated high school the year before my freshman year in high school. So there was quite a bit of an age gap. 
I always had a little bit of a crush on him, but I never thought anything of it because he was literally a senior in high school while I was in middle school. So one day him and I hang out and I decided that I was not going to do the nasty with him because I did not want to get ghosted right away after. Been there, done that. But sadly, this is easier said than done. Two weeks later, him and I are still doing the nasty and talking when all of a sudden he says, I think we should slow things down. Who, who, wait, who? Who? Like, oh, okay, now you think we should slow things down. Pretty sure that seems a little ass backwards, but okay. Sure, bud. A week later, my stepmom and I are talking and I low-key let it slip that my period was late. Oh, hell no. And not just like a day or two late, five days late. Go home and get the gun. So, you know, we stop at the nearest convenience store and we pick up a pregnancy test. I take the test and then she gave me a hug reassuring me that everything was going to be okay. All I could do was cry because as I said earlier, I'm only 18 years old. I just graduated high school. I felt like all of those plans that I had for myself in the future were just ripped out of my hands, crumpled up thrown in the trash, and lit on fire. So my parents end up taking me to Mark's house. I show him the pregnancy test, and all of a sudden, he starts freaking out. So then he tells me it's up to me whether I want to keep it or not. Like, yeah, I know. And we start to Google where I can go to get an abortion. Because guess what? Just guess. Where do I live? Texas. And what was my luck? Texas had just overturned Roe v. Wade the week before. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And it would be expensive to travel somewhere. So obviously we decided not to do that either. Well, fast forward to November, my birthday month, a eh? Girl, shut the fuck up! Anyway, so like I said, fast forward to November. The one day I'm at work and earlier Mark had told me that he was going to go to his brother's house. And since I was at work, I didn't care. Until, dun dun dun, one of my friends, my work friends, convinced me to check and see if he was where he said he was. I swear, it's always the work friends that have like the best intuition. Like if they tell you your man is cheating, he's probably cheating. And I'm not gonna lie, you know, something was a little bit sus about the fact that he was going to hang out with his nephew super late. Yeah, shit just like Loki wasn't adding up. I drive past his brother's house and what do you know? He isn't there. Don't be shocked. You're shocked? You're shocked? So now I am blowing this mother phone up. After what feels like forever, he finally answers the damn phone. And I'm like, hey, um, I know you're not at your brother's house. Where the fuck are you? And he confesses to being at this girl Hannah's house. He is swearing up and down that nothing happened with this girl Hannah. You lying? Yeah. I believe him. I let it go because he tells me that he loves me and he wants to make things work. Dumbass bitch. So four days later, while he's at work, I realize that this tool bag left his Apple Watch at home and that hoe had go through me bitch written all over it. So what did I do? I went through that shit and um, I found some very raunchy text messages between him and Hannah. They had been talking about how much they wanted each other and he had gotten mad at her for not wanting to do the nasty with him. On the screen are the receipts. I go f***ing psycho. So after I confront him, he begs me not to leave him. And you know, he swears he'll never do it again. He lied. Ha! Got he! <laughs> Turns out that he had been asking other girls for new and sending new to them. It caused my body so much stress that I literally had to have an emergency c-section due to how much stress my body and baby was under. Him and I aren't together anymore but we still live in the same house. We actually sleep in separate bedrooms. He is an amazing father but as a significant other absolutely not. That man is garbage. Story time about why you should be careful about who you go on vacation with. So a little background information, I was 18 years old and a senior in high school and I had planned to go on a vacation to Barcelona in Europe with my best friend Kayla and this other girl Megan. Now we didn't know Megan too well but we were still friends with her. But I'm not gonna lie, the red flag started before we even left to go to Barcelona. Because as we were booking this trip, Kayla and I wanted to keep a smaller budget because we were going to be leaving for college when we got back. But Megan was not having it at all. She wanted to spend what seemed like every single last penny on this trip. 
But thankfully we ended up compromising on a cheap Airbnb in the middle of Budapest. Well, fast forward to whenever we all land in Spain. So we go to the bar and we meet these two British guys. One's name was Will and he was hanging around with Kayla and I. Then the other one who we're gonna call Harry, he was chatting it up with Megan. Keep in mind, Megan has a boyfriend. So before we left, the guys asked for our Instagram and Kayla and I said no, they respected it. But Megan on the other hand was giving out her socials. Now initially we weren't judging her because because you can be friends with guys and have a boyfriend. Next night we decided to hit the clubs again because literally every night there was crazy. We meet these guys. They were super cool and one's name was Rylan and the other one's name was Ellis. Rylan was hitting on Megan and Ellis was totally into me which I didn't mind because he was so cute. And while we're all hanging out, Megan has the audacity to turn to me and be like, oh my God, I would totally do the nasty with Ellis if I didn't have a boyfriend. Meanwhile, she knew that I was interested in him. Anyway, so the rest of the night, Ellis and I basically spent it together. We exchanged socials and Megan was super drunk, so we ended up going home. And then Megan decides to call her man while she's in the bed with Kayla. Like, and we all sleep in one room so we can hear everything that the other person's doing. And then she starts having phone, you know what, with her man while she's in the bed with Kayla. And she's taking nude pics of herself and sending them while she's in the bed. Kayla felt extremely uncomfortable. Anyways, fast forward to the next day. Ellis and I hang out again and we ended up kissing at the end of the night. And Megan was blackout drunk again, but this time on the way home, not only had she been flirting with so many guys, but she was trying to get with Ellis right in front of me. We ended up going to their apartments afterward and literally Megan invites him into bed with her. He didn't get into bed with her, but I was so pissed off. Like you have a boyfriend and also you're trying to steal some guy that you know that I like. Kayla and I were furious, so we just decided to go and walk home. Fast forward the next day, Megan wakes up and she can't remember anything that happened the day before. After this, the vibe was just awful, but Kayla and I tried to ignore it. And I'm pretty sure that Megan had no idea that there was a bad vibe. Like I'm pretty sure that she thought nothing she did was wrong. Anyway, so we go to this beach party thing and Megan was in charge of booking the beach party, right? Kayla and I gave her money to book tickets that was unlimited drinking. What did she do? She did not book the unlimited drinking package she booked the regular one anyway so Megan starts flirting with this 30 year old man and that's whenever Kayla and I decide okay we're gonna go walk around because we're not staying here for this like this is our vacation too anyways we make our way back over to Megan and she looks pissed she was so mad that we weren't staying with her while she talked to this old man and we were like, we never even let you out of our sight. Like we were barely 10 feet away from you, but we're sorry. She was like, yeah, it's the least that you can do after your behavior. And I'm like, what the fuck? So then all of us are arguing on the beach and usually I'm the one who is very feisty, but Kayla went off. I have never seen her like this ever in my life because Megan thought that she could just go off on us and we were gonna stand there and say nothing. So then she orders a cab and we offer to get in it with her, but she says no and we stayed and we had a really good night because one, this is our vacation too and we are nobody's babysitters. We tried to make sure that you were having a good time and we took care of you while you were blackout drunk and you were not about to treat us like shit. Moral of the story, know who you're going on vacation with before you go on vacation too about how this guy and his girlfriend literally beat me up so like i said him and i did the nasty at the football game and then i go onto the bleachers with my friends and she tells me that he has a girlfriend but i'm not gonna lie at this point we had already been talking for two months and i really didn't care because i liked him and i wasn't just gonna turn my feelings off first of all i do not owe that girl any loyalty number two we were already intimate with each other so i don't know what can make this situation worse than it already was I mean, I did confront him about it and he told me that he was gonna break up with her for me. So I believed him. I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna wait for him to break it off with her and I'm still gonna talk to him. So eventually he literally made me wait for like two more months. So what did I do? I told his girlfriend everything. I'm not gonna lie, it's not even that I wanted to be a good person. It was literally just to spite him. It's like, yeah, your man wants to be with me. He don't want you. This is the text messages of him telling me that he was gonna break up with you. That day he called me and he was like, hey, do you wanna hang out? And I was shook that he did not bring up anything that I said to his girlfriend like for part three story time about how this girl and her boyfriend beat me up so a little background information i was in 11th grade and i was 17 years old and in the summer my friend and i went to go and watch fireworks for the 4th of july at this park and most of the people there went to a completely different school but we ended up meeting this group of guys and i was really vibing with the one guy who was there he was super cute super chill and we got along great and I just want to put this out there. I did not think to ask that he had a girlfriend because he was being super flirtatious. 
and just really wasn't acting like he had a girlfriend. I literally just hate how we have to ask people if they're in relationships now because they don't want to be honest or loyal. And then we will look like the bad guys because they were dishonest. Anyway, so him and I start to hang out a lot and he really likes me. I really like him. And we went to this football game at his school and we ended up doing the nasty. After that, I'm in the bleachers with my friends and one of my friends tells me, yeah, he has a girlfriend. So she couldn't have told me this before we did the nasty. Anyway, it's like for part two. Part three about how this girl and her boyfriend literally beat me up. So like I said, I told his girlfriend everything about how he didn't want her. I sent her the receipts and everything. And then she has the audacity to tell me I'm disgusting, I'm this, I'm that, saying that I'm gross for even doing anything with him. I should have known that he had a girlfriend. I should have told him off. Like sis, your man did not mention you once. He didn't even mention you as an ex-girlfriend, so put the blame on him, not me. So later that day, he invites me over, and I am shook because I at least thought that he was going to bring it up and be like, why did you text my girlfriend? So I thought that maybe she was one of those girls where she's like, OMG, my man is never wrong. I'm not even going to confront him because I don't want him to break up with me, and it just wasn't his fault. So fast forward, I get to his house. I usually just walk in because I've been over there so many times. Well, as soon as I walk in the door, him and his girlfriend start wailing on me. I ended up with a few broken ribs, but I also ended up pregnant with his child. His family thinks that he should be with me since I'm having his kid. She decided to stay with him, so she comes to every prenatal appointment. Story time about how I almost got kidnapped at a grocery store. So a little background information. I was 16, and it was during the summertime. And I was super excited because I had just got my license. But my parents had this idea that if they made me drive around and do all their errands, that I would be a better driver. So I was pretty much like their B-I-T-C-H. Anyway, so the one night my mom wanted to make this recipe that she saw on TikTok and she didn't have the right seasonings for it. So who did she tell to go to the store? Yours truly, me. And on Sundays, the mini market that was in our town would close at four o'clock. So I had to drive like 30 minutes away to the nearest Target. And when I got there, I had to park in the back because they had like 10 handicap spaces up front another 10 for when you sit there and they bring your shit out to you, and another five whenever you're picking something up that you already ordered. But in all honesty, that didn't bother me because I had never heard about any girls getting trafficked at a grocery store. Like for part two. Part two about how I almost got kidnapped at a grocery store. So like I said, I parked all the way in the back of the parking lot. I mean, okay, not all the way in the back, but I was damn near close. So I go in and I'm not too familiar with this Target. I've only been here a few times because the mini market in my hometown is usually the one that I go to. So I'm looking around and I realize that there's this little girl following me. But it seemed like she was more like keeping an eye on me. Like she would stand like 20 feet behind me, but just like stare at me, you know, peek through the aisles. And she had did that for like 10 minutes. But whenever I finally went up to the checkout, she was gone and this woman came up to me. She was like, oh my gosh, have you seen my daughter? She was running around the store. I don't know where she is. So I described the little girl to her that I saw. And she was like, yeah, that's her. I can't find her. Will you please help me look for her? And I didn't have the time for this because my parents were going to wring my neck. But I said part three about how I was almost kidnapped at a grocery store. So like I said, she asked me to help look for her daughter. And I was like, I'm going to go tell a Target employee. And she was like, no, don't worry. They're all already looking. They have security all over the place. And she was like, will you help me check the parking lot? Because I don't know if she left. She was like, I've been having them look for the past 10 minutes. So I didn't think anything of this because I didn't think that some lady would try to kidnap me. So I went into the parking lot with her and I'm like, okay, where do you think she would have went? Like, did you drive here? Did she maybe go to the car? And she was like, no, we live like five minutes down the road. Do you think that we could get in your car and drive around? And I said, yeah, because I thought that it would speed up the process. And my dad's truck was really high off the ground. So while we're walking, I'm like, I think someone's under my car. And she was like, what? No, 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 no. It's probably just the shadow. And I'm like, no, there's someone under my car. So I turn around to walk back into the store and she starts like pulling my arm towards my car. So an employee called the police whenever I went in there. And long story short, they were trying to kidnap me. Story time about how my sister was hooking up with my boyfriend. Little background information. I was 15 and in 10th grade. And I have never had a boyfriend before. Any guy that I was sort of talking to, we never made it out of the talking stage. But fast forward, I met this one guy who we're going to call Jake. And because of how tragic my love life was, I didn't expect us to get into a relationship. But he ended up asking me to be his girlfriend. So of course I said yes. I was super excited that I had a boyfriend. And then he met my family. And my older sister and I were like super close. So I told her all about him. And she just couldn't wait to meet him. 
Real quick, I just want to give a big shout out to Lumino for sponsoring today's video. Lumino Whitening Kit is one of the best ways to whiten your teeth without paying hundreds of dollars, especially if you have sensitive teeth, this is the next best thing. Although I have veneers, they only cover the front of my teeth, so my teeth can still be very sensitive to certain chemicals that other brands use in their products. If you guys want to go check out their 7-pack for under $15, the link is in my bio. So whenever he met my sister, she was being super talkative to him, and I thought it was just because she was excited to meet him, like for part 2. Part 2 about how I found out my sister was hooking up with my boyfriend. So like I said, he came over, he met my sister, they got along super well. Fast forward, my parents decided to have a family gathering and my sister was like begging me to invite my boyfriend. Which I didn't plan on inviting him at all because my family is super annoying and would make a big deal about the fact that this is my first boyfriend. She was like, okay, but if you guys are seriously in a relationship, I think that he should meet your family. So I ended up inviting him. So my mom called me to the kitchen to help pass out drinks, which was super annoying because my sister was literally doing fucking nothing. So after I'm done with that, I'm looking for my boyfriend and he's nowhere to be found. So I go upstairs and as I'm about to walk up the stairs, both of them come down. And when I asked what was wrong, like why they were upstairs together, she was like, oh, I was showing him to the bathroom, which I felt super weird about. But because she was my sister, I let it go because you're supposed to trust your family. Stuff part three about how my sister got with my boyfriend. So things started to get really sus because every time that he would come over, they would always find a way to be alone with each other. So fast forward, my sister and I are supposed to go to one of her friend's parties. The whole time though, she kept asking me if I would invite my boyfriend. And no offense, I love my boyfriend, but I need space away from him sometimes. And not to mention, I felt like I was dragging him around like a dog because she was the one who would want me to invite him everywhere. Fast forward, I end up inviting him to the party. My sister gets super drunk, really sick, and my boyfriend offers to take her to the bathroom. And I was like, excuse me, I'm her sister. I can do that. Thank you very much. So after I say that, my sister looks at me and she was like, I would appreciate it if you would just stop being like this because I feel super sick right now. Like, okay, play the victim. Anyway, so I go to check on them in the bathroom. They're not in there. And one of the bedroom doors was open. So when I went in there, I saw them doing the nasty. I asked her how long this had been going on and she said it was, was since the first time that they met. And now I'm ignoring my sister until she goes to college. Story time about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So a little background information. I was 14 and in eighth grade, and my best friends and I were having a sleepover. And right before we had went to sleep, we were all talking about this one TikTok trend that was going around. It's like this trend where girls would go and put wax on their boyfriends while they were sleeping and then take it off. Well, I didn't think anything of it, so that night I went to sleep. I should have knew this was going to happen because I'm always the butt of the joke whenever it comes to our friend group. Like, I'm always the one getting picked on. Like, there was this one thing that my friend Ashley saw online. It was like, if you put white nail polish on your teeth, it would make your teeth whiter. So who did they decide to try it out on? Yup, me. And yes, I could have said no, but these were my best friends. I didn't think that they would intentionally hurt me. Anyway, so like I said, I go to sleep and all of a sudden I wake up in the middle of the night to something very, very, very hot on my face. I open my eyes and all of my friends are standing above me with their flashlights on. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow while I was asleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, went to sleep, didn't think anything was going to happen, and then I wake up and all of them are standing above me with their flashlights on. And then I realized that Ashley has a stick in her hand. Once I realized that there was wax on the other end of the stick, I started screaming. So then Kelsey decides to cover my mouth. She's like, shh, it's not that bad, I promise, like, don't worry. I get up real quick, I run to the bathroom, and there's like this pink transparent wax on my eyebrow. It was about 3 a.m. and we're all sitting there trying to find ways to get this wax off of my fucking eyebrow. Well, then Amber goes, I'm tired of this, grabs it and rips it off my forehead. So I'm crying at this point. Like I'm in eighth grade, I'm about to have my glow up and y'all gotta ruin it with taking my eyebrow off. So nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night because they thought that I was gonna do something to them. So I acted all cool. I was like, no, it's fine. I can just draw it on. When in reality, I was going to cut this bitch's hair. Like for part three. Part three about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night. I acted like it was okay because I was plotting in my head that I was going to cut one of their fucking ponytails off. So I go over to their house next week. And every single day that week, they were telling me how good my drawn on eyebrow looked. Um, It didn't actually look good. And none of my hairs were growing back. So around 12 o'clock, all of us are ready to go to bed. I'm laying down pretending that I'm sleeping and they think I'm sleeping. So they're over there talking shit about me on her bed, Ashley's bed. 
I wasn't sure which one's eyebrow I should rip off because the one ripped off my eyebrow, but then the other one put the wax on my eyebrow. They were like, she's sleeping. I don't think she's going to do anything. She doesn't even have the balls to do anything. So around four in the morning, everybody is dead asleep. I get up and Ashley had her hair in a ponytail. So that was easy enough. I grabbed a pair of scissors out of my book bag and I cut her hair off. Story time about how I came out to my homophobic parents. So a little background information. I was 14 or 15 and I was a freshman in high school. And all throughout middle school, I had been questioning my sexuality because I didn't really know what I was into, as do most kids my age. Well, due to this, I was bullied in school because people would always ask me, oh, do you like boys or girls? And when I would say that I don't know, they would call me slurs. So anytime that I got into a relationship, I would keep it a secret. And the only person that knew was my best friend. But the summer before my freshman year, I got together with my current boyfriend. And we're going to call him Andrew. Andrew and I met through Snapchat through a mutual friend. We started FaceTiming all the time and we found out that we lived in the same area so we started hanging out all the time as well. Well eventually him and I started dating and after about three or four weeks we took our relationship a little bit further and his parents knew that he was gay and that we were in a relationship but my parents on the other hand did not know. Like for part two. Part two about how I came out to my very homophobic parents. So like I said before, my boyfriend and I had decided to take our relationship a step further and his parents knew that he was gay and that him and I were in a relationship. But my parents, on the other hand, did not know. They just thought that him and I were best, 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 best friends that hung out every single day. But yeah, my parents think that doing the nasty before marriage is a sin, being gay is a sin. Pretty much doing anything is a sin. So the one day I was in my room watching Rapul's Drag Race... By the way, I don't know if I pronounced that right. And then my mom walks in and she says, I don't want you watching these men in wigs and heels, acting like females, blah, blah, blah. That's a sin. Like, mom, go get a fucking life. Thanks. And then she says, if I find out you're a part of this, you're going to need God and Jesus to protect you from me. So my boyfriend and I are in complete shock. Well, then I finally decided that I was going to grow some balls and tell my mom that I was a part of that community. Like for part three. Part three about how I came out to my super homophobic parents. So like I said, my mom was like, if you're a part of this community, you're going to need God and Jesus to protect you from me. And I was really upset. I started crying and my boyfriend, he's like comforting me. I finally decided to grow some balls and tell her that I was in fact a part of the community. Well, um, I ended up getting my ass beat. They also told me that they were going to take me to a priest to get an exorcism. So I basically moved out of my parents' house and I moved into my uncle's house who is a part of the LGBTQ community. And he's in full support of my boyfriend and I's relationship. I blocked both of my parents and I haven't talked to them ever since I moved out. Well, that's a lie. The only time that I did talk to them was to wish them a happy Mother's Day and happy Father's Day. But other than that, I decided that I want to be happy and to be happy, I had to keep them out of my life. Story time about how my boyfriend was seeing another girl behind my back. So a little background information, I was living with my dad and I had just started a new school and I became really good friends with this group of kids. And in our friend group, there was this boy who we're going to call Alex and him and I hit it off like right away. We had been talking for two months. And by the way, during this whole time, his friends were telling me how much he loved me and how much he wanted to be with me. So eventually him and I started dating. And of course, like any other tragic love story, I had to move far away because I had to go live with my mom, blah, 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 blah. But since I would visit my dad for the holidays, him and I would still be able to see each other sometimes, which is pretty good for a long distance relationship, especially when you're in school. So I told him about how I had to move and he was really sad, but he said that I can trust him. Red flag number one, because why would you say that in the first place? There should be no reason on why I have to quote, trust you to be loyal when I'm away. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was seeing another girl behind my back. So like I said, I told him that we were going to have to do long distance and he was sad, but then he said that he could trust me. And like I said before, why the hell would I have to trust you? Because um, you should just be loyal in general, duh. So I'm like, hey, I want to spend time with you before I leave. Can we hang out? And he was like, oh, sorry, I have plans, but we can hang out later tonight. So I was like, okay, whatever. And a few hours go by. I never get a text from him or a call, nothing. So I text him and he's like, sorry, I forgot. So I'm really sad right now, but I forgave him. Um, Quick note here, ladies, if he wanted to, he would. He would have canceled his plans if he really wanted to see you. 
Anyway, so I move and fast forward two to three weeks and Alex and I literally have only been texting, no calls, nothing like that. So I'm talking to one of his friends and one of his friends tells me that he's been talking to this other girl and he's been telling everybody that he's been wanting to break up with me for weeks because he wants to date her instead, like for part three. Part three about how my boyfriend was seeing another girl behind my back. So like I said, I was talking to his friend and his friend said that he's been talking to this girl for two to three weeks about the time that I've been gone. And he's been telling everybody about how he wants to break up with me for her. So of course I'm sad and crying and I confront him and he says, oh, she's just a friend, blah, blah, blah. So I press the issue and then he tells me that he lost feelings for me weeks ago. And that the reason why he didn't tell me was because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. Yet he led me on for two to three weeks. Like, how does that work, Alex? How? Anyway, so I blocked him because there's no way in hell that I'm going to keep talking to a guy that was making fun of me with his friends and telling everybody around him that he wanted to break up with me. That's embarrassing. Part three about how my boyfriend was seeing another girl behind my back. So like I said, I was talking to his friend and his friend said that he's been talking to this girl for two to three weeks about the time that I've been gone. And he's been telling everybody about how he wants to break up with me for her. So of course I'm sad and crying and I confront him and he says, oh, she's just a friend, blah, blah, blah. So I press the issue and then he tells me that he lost feelings for me weeks ago. And that the reason why he didn't tell me was because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. Yet he led me on for two to three weeks. Like, how does that work, Alex? How? Anyway, so I blocked him because there's no way in hell that I'm going to keep talking to a guy that was making fun of me with his friends and telling everybody around him that he wanted to break up with me. That's embarrassing. Story time about how my boyfriend was seeing another girl behind my back. So a little background information, I was living with my dad and I had just started a new school and I became really good friends with this group of kids. And in our friend group, there was this boy who we're going to call Alex and him and I hit it off like right away. We had been talking for two months. And by the way, during this whole time, his friends were telling me how much he loved me and how much he wanted to be with me. So eventually him and I started dating. And of course, like any other tragic love story, I had to move far away because I had to go live with my mom, blah, 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 blah. But since I would visit my dad for the holidays, him and I would still be able to see each other sometimes, which is pretty good for a long distance relationship, especially when you're in school. So I told him about how I had to move. And he was really sad, but he said that I can trust him. Red flag number one, because why would you say that in the first place? There should be no reason on why I have to quote, trust you to be loyal when I'm away. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was seeing another girl behind my back. So like I said, I told him that we were going to have to do long distance and he was sad, but then he said that he could trust me. And like I said before, why the hell would I have to trust you? Because um, you should just be loyal in general, duh. So I'm like, hey, I want to spend time with you before I leave. Can we hang out? And he was like, oh, sorry, I have plans, but we can hang out later tonight. So I was like, okay, whatever. And a few hours go by. I never get a text from him or a call, nothing. So I text him and he's like, sorry, I forgot. So I'm really sad right now, but I forgave him. Um, Quick note here, ladies, if he wanted to, he would. He would have canceled his plans if he really wanted to see you. Anyway, so I move and fast forward two to three weeks and Alex and I literally have only been texting, no calls, nothing like that. So I'm talking to one of his friends and one of his friends tells me that he's been talking to this other girl and he's been telling everybody that he's been wanting to break up with me for weeks because he wants to date her instead, like for part three. Story time about how my best friend was a snake. So a little background information, I was 15 and in ninth grade. And I've been best friends with this girl who we're going to call Callie since 5th grade. Well, fast forward to 8th grade, there was this guy in my class that I really liked. And obviously I told Callie about it because like, duh, she is my best friend. And she has never talked to this boy. She never even knew who he was before I had told her about him. And by the way, we're going to call him Jake. Well, eventually him and I start talking and she was hyping us up like she really wanted us to be together so bad. And I was really feeling the love and support. Well, not long after that, I had to move to another town for like three months because of my dad. So Jake and I, we stopped talking after me being gone for like two weeks. And of course, not long after that, one of my friends from home texted me and she's like, hey, you know, Callie and that guy that you were talking to, right? AKA Jake. Obviously, I say yes. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend was a snake. So like I said, I had to move away for three months because of my dad and Jake and I, we stopped talking about two weeks after I had left. And then I get a text from my friend saying, hey, you know, Callie and that guy that you were talking to, Jake, obviously I say yes. 
And then she goes, oh, well, they're talking about getting together. And I was livid. I'm like, dude, I've literally been gone for like less than a month and you're already trying to get with the guy that I liked. What the actual, you know what? So I bawl my eyes out for like two hours straight. And then I decide that I'm going to confront her. And she literally says to me, like she has the audacity to say that she's been in love with him for so long, even before I had told her about him. Which is a lie, because as I told you guys earlier, she didn't know this man. Well, anyways, Jake ended up friend zoning her and she didn't even really apologize to me. She said sorry, but like she didn't acknowledge the importance of the situation and how it made me feel. She just thought that saying sorry would make it all better. Story time, is blood really thicker than water? Metaphorically speaking, of course. So a little background information, I was 16 years old and I was in 10th grade and I had just started dating this guy that my friends introduced me to. He was extremely attractive, really smart, and really kind. Literally had all the traits a girl could want in a boyfriend. So him and I are talking for a while and then we start dating and we were amazing together. And my sister had just came back home from teaching in Thailand. Surprisingly, her and I got super close because we always used to fight with each other. And now we were inseparable. The only issue was she was 25 years old acting like a child. She always wanted to be at my boyfriend's house with him and his family. Weird, I know. Anyway, so she was always over there with them and I thought that maybe she was just lonely. Eh, wrong, of course. Now, of course, like any other relationship, mine wasn't perfect, but my boyfriend and I started having more problems than usual when my sister showed up. He was being super weird and all the signs pointed to him cheating on me. Like for part two. Part two, is blood thicker than water? Metaphorically speaking, of course. So like I said, my sister started spending more time at my boyfriend's house. I thought that she was lonely, but then my boyfriend started acting weird and all the signs put into him cheating on me. But I ignored it because I thought that him and I were in love like in the movies. And also if I broke up with him, it would be like breaking up with his family because I love them like my own. Fast forward, his sister ends up getting married and my sister and I were invited to the wedding. Fast forward, everybody gets drunk. We end up spending the night at his cousin's house and something was off with my boyfriend. He wasn't really talking to me. He wouldn't touch me. He pretty much acted like he was done with me. Well, then there's my sister who was flirting and touching him like it was normal. Fast forward a month, I asked my sister if anything happened between them. And she goes, um, I think we slept together. So I confronted him about it. And he just laughs and he's like, it wasn't that serious. So I end up breaking up with him and then I start finding unhealthy ways to cope. AKA drinking. And eventually I got so lonely to the point where I forgave my sister. And then I started seeing this other guy. And he was amazing. Like for part three. Part three, is blood thicker than water? Metaphorically speaking, of course. So like I said, I forgave my sister and then I got a new guy. He was amazing. And then my sister started begging to hang out with us. Now, of course, you would have thought that I learned from the first time, but I did not. I just completely ignored the signs that God gave me that she was a bad person. Okay, I guess not a bad person. She just didn't give a fuck about my feelings. Well, the one weekend his parents went away and they needed him to house sit. So he invited me over to house sit with him. And then guess who tags along? My my sister. I mean, I guess I could have told her that she couldn't come, but at the same time, I was trying to be a forgiving person, okay? And I thought that she wouldn't do this shit to me again. Well, I was wrong because on the last night of house sitting, we all decided that we were going to get drunk. And my sister made sure that I got more effed up than everybody else. I ended up actually getting alcohol poisoning and I almost died. But she didn't care. She was too focused on sleeping with the new guy. Um, the worst part of this is they started dating and my mom was on her side. It's been three years and I'm still trying to forgive her and my 